Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. Tech giant Apple is facing some big legal trouble in the US. The Department of Justice and 16 states are suing the company in a landmark antitrust lawsuit. Here's Joe to explain. Do you know why we brought you in here today? Of course it does. You can't be trusted, can you? Well, well we don't know that yet. Yeah, this little device is the centre of a huge legal battle right now. Over in the US, the Department of Justice and 16 states are accusing Apple of creating an illegal monopoly in the smartphone market. We allege that Apple has consolidated its monopoly power not by making its own products better, but by making other products worse. That's right. The Department of Justice reckons Apple purposely designs its products to keep apps or devices made by other companies, like smartwatches, digital wallets or messaging platforms, from working easily or, in some cases, at all. That has meant fewer choices, higher prices and fees, lower quality smartphones, apps and accessories, and less innovation from Apple and its competitors. What do you have to say about that? Oh. Not going to talk, huh? It's a phone. It can't really talk for itself. No, but Apple can. It says any restrictions on outside apps or devices is for their customers' privacy and safety. The lawsuit is expected to go on for the next few years. So for now... You're free to go. Ooh. The rainbow lorikeet has just been crowned Australia's most commonly spotted bird. Last October, more than 60,000 keen bird watchers spent at least 20 minutes outside trying to identify the birds in their backyard and added the results into the Aussie Bird Count app, with the rainbow lorikeet spotted the most, followed by the noisy miner and the magpie. Now it's time to continue our series of profiles on influential Australian women for Women's History Month. Rookie reporter Michelle is going to tell us about Dame Mary Gilmore, who you might recognise from our $10 note. Meet Dame Mary Gilmore. Mary was born in 1865 near Goulburn in New South Wales. She went to lots of different schools and that's where she discovered her love for writing. There was a depression, which meant the economy was really bad and workers were striking over pay and work conditions. That sparked Mary's interest in politics and social change. She wrote articles and poems for every publication possible, campaigning for women's rights, pensions, and better treatment for returned servicemen and Indigenous people. Dame Mary Gilmore died in 1962 at 97 years old, but she lives on today on our $10 notes, along with her famous poem, No Foe Shall Gather Our Harvest, on our reminding us all to fight for what we believe in so we can make the world a better place. Ooh. Hey, uh, could you give us a hand real quick? <sighs> no, no, that's not what I meant. Help me! Now this game of chess is using the brain in more ways than one. Noland here is the first person to get a Neuralink chip implant, which lets him use his mind to control his computer. Hey, if y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's, that's all me. A diving accident left him paralysed from the shoulders down, and he says the Neuralink, while it could do with some improvements here and there, has already changed his life. Now to the UK, where scientists are in a race to save the world's coral. In this lab, they're growing all sorts from around the world in special tanks that mimic their ideal conditions perfectly. They say the lab-grown corals can be transplanted onto struggling reefs. And finally, to baby turtles hatching at the Queensland Museum. Look at that one. He's a strong one, isn't he? These endangered loggerhead turtles started their journey on Monrepo Beach near Bundaberg, but have been brought here to incubate and hatch safe from predators that might eat them before being returned to the ocean. Whew. Well, that's all from us this week. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Bye. <laughs> Help? Anyone? All right.